I think anyone paying attention knew that it had to end in tears. It didn't make any sense. Yeah. As a real estate developer in New York City, tell me about the permitting issues. Like, I know that California is having issues. They've got these mm -hmm. Class A buildings that maybe no one's ever going to go back to work in. The hardest part, they say, is converting those buildings from commercial to residential. Like, right. it, to me, it seems like a layup. It's like, okay, you've got <clears> the skin <throat> on the building. You've got the building. You just have to demo some walls and build build uh, housing, but I guess it's not that easy, right? It's not that simple. So um, they're, they're, I think the two biggest limitations are, uh, one is the um, is the policy limitation, right? The bureaucracy and, um, you know, working through all of that. But there are also physical limitations, right? Practical physical limitations of design. If you have a commercial building that's really large, right? Um, one of the main things that residential needs mm -hmm. is light and air, right, um, to living spaces. And so if you have a really large floor plate Mm. It can become not very economically feasible, right, mm -hmm. to have a large portion of that floor space not really um, easily usable for living, right, mm -hmm. um, to make the economics work, right? So um, there are some solutions to that. There are some commercial buildings that that works fine for, especially if you have, like, basically a, a curtain wall kind of um, facade structure, right, mm -hmm. where you have ways to get light in uh, where, or where you have um, – Kind of centralized shafts where you can use light tubes and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. That's more kind of on the sustainability sustainability spectrum. Mm -hmm. But um, but in general, yeah, there definitely can be uh, limitations to that um, to converting. And then there's just capital, right? It takes yeah. quite quite a, it's a big undertaking um, and, and and a risk in uh, executing a business model like that, not knowing whether it's going to work. And are there specific? We'll say either consumer or institutions that would fund that. Would that be something that? You, know, you hear a lot about the residential, or the, sorry, you hear a lot about the re, the regional banks who tend to do more of that type of financing. Is that still the case? And if so, what are the mm, issues? So, yes, uh, I think that um, a lot of real estate development, and I, I can only speak from a New York perspective, um, is primarily funded by uh, local regional um, banks. And um, and so for for a lot of those, right, they've they've had their liquidity challenges with capital flight. We're starting to see signs that a lot of them, uh, right, even today, headlines where a lot of them are starting to see return of that capital. So that's great. Mm -hmm. um, some of the banks that I deal with, and I'm not going to drop names, but um, have actually done well because precisely because their deposit base um, is in mom and pop businesses that do a lot of you know basic you know um, defensive community. Uh, you know, business. Mm -hmm. And so those deposits are sticky, right? Yeah. Um, and and uh, and because it's a true community bank mm -hmm. where that community, right, rallied around the bank and didn't, you know, didn't, uh, they didn't experience a lot of capital flight. Um, so those banks are still there. They're mm -hmm. still lending. They're probably navigating a more difficult environment. You know, now that the headline uh, noise is dying down, they're still probably um, dealing with, um, you know, the, the rate environment. Recycle. Right? Let's talk about AI. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there you go. Um <laughs> and uh, and you know, kind of net, uh, you know, their 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 net margins um, being squeezed, mm -hmm. um, but that's something that the, the overall market is going to have to work through. Um, there's there is there is a big need for um, for in, in in New York for City Hall to get behind um, kind of more more accelerated um, kind of addressing on a more accelerated schedule, uh, making it easier mm -hmm. for and and providing funding and support. Mm -hmm. Um, tax or, or whatever else um, for developers to do that, right? Mm -hmm. To convert some of these commercial spaces, to convert some of these hotels. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, one that of, seems like a layup, all those somewhat just, rundown hotels that are in nice so areas. There was so much like, overdevelopment of hotels yeah. years ago. Right. And I think, I think anyone paying attention knew that it had to end in tears. It didn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, uh, it, there was just relentless development of hotels in all of these neighborhoods. Um, it's one of those things where, for whatever whatever weird reason, um, the the particular economics of doing that mm -hmm. made a lot of sense. And so, um, whenever you kind of create an incentive structure, right, that makes sense. People are just going to do that and wash, rinse, repeat, right, mm -hmm. as much as mm -hmm. possible. Um, I think the good news is that hotels probably work better, right, mm -hmm. for um, especially kind of smaller form factor apartments, right, um, which is something that we need, right. You know, mm -hmm. studios, one beds um, is something that we need. Um, so. 
hopefully, uh, I, I think New York City finds mm -hmm. a way to come up with programs that kind of get developers back on the horse, so to speak, um, doing more of that work. Uh, and and I'll I'll just make a small plug for smaller developers. Yeah. Because I think a lot of the I think a lot of the policy consideration is focused around very large development. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things I always say uh, whenever I have a chance to say it, like now, is that New York City, um, mm -hmm. as big of a city as it is, it's a city of small buildings, mm -hmm. right? We look at the skyline. We let, you know we were all looking up and focusing on these on these glass towers and these steel towers, um, but New York City is a city of small buildings, especially residentially, yeah. right? Um, and so, uh, not only the residents, but also the entrepreneurs, the families that sure. own these small buildings, mm -hmm. right? Um, don't they? They don't typically get as much uh, policy support. Um, in in developing that, and that's something that New York needs very much because we have old building stock, mm -hmm. right? Um, we have mm -hmm. some of the oldest building stock in the country, and uh, and we're living on top of each other, right? So um, it's expensive and complicated um, to to redevelop, um, but that's something that we need badly to do um, mm -hmm. if we want to really accelerate urbanization, which I think is something that over long term is something we should be promoting, right? Because mm -hmm. it's just a more efficient way to live and a better way to take care of the planet mm -hmm. is to support urbanization, but we have to do it in a healthier way. So we have to incentivize developers to build sustainable buildings that are healthier to live in, like in terms of air quality, in terms of energy efficiency, um, in terms of just a more robust building, in terms of green roofs, mm -hmm. for example, right? So I think we need to see more more um, policy from the city that supports that financially and makes it easier for developers to do. Hey, thanks for watching The Merge. We've got a ton more stuff for you to watch on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, everywhere. Check us out.